You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rhema Power, with Reverend Nee Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Today I'm sharing with you on what I call love gives or love is a giver, the practical expression of God's love. Turn your Bible to John chapter 3, verse 16. Popular verse. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This for many people is the foundation of our relationship with the Lord that there is a God who gives so freely that he gave his only begotten son so that anybody he didn't just give to people who liked him he didn't give to people who deserved it but he gave a gift to save he gave a gift to all mankind so that everyone irrespective of where you find yourself in any part of your world you will receive salvation and you will not perish so this is god's love god so loved the emphasis on the word is so loved there is an endearment there is a passion there is a love of god that overshadows our guilt and our sins and our mistakes so it doesn't matter what you've been through it doesn't matter whether you think you deserve it or not God still loves you and this is the foundation of our relationship with him that there is a God who loves us irrespective of who we are and what we have done I pray that this morning God's love will manifest in your life whenever you feel love one of the things about love is that it will melt and soften a hardened heart so maybe you have a hardened criminal heart (laughs) you have a wounded heart you have an unforgiving heart but God's love comes to melt and soften and make you alive amen God's love comes to make you soft it comes to make you passionate it comes to give you a love for other people because of the way you have received God's love you are able to extend that love to other people so in this verse we can clearly see that when we didn't deserve it when we were perishing when we deserved anger God loved us when you begin to reflect on the love of God it is easier for you to extend the same love to other people so one of the things we should meditate on a lot is how much does God love us what does it mean when we say God loves us how far will God go to show us his love you see till you understand and begin to identify with it you will find it difficult to relate with other people sometimes you are so unforgiving sometimes you don't want to let go sometimes you've been hurt sometimes you've made up your mind in a very negative way but you see you just need to sit down and think about how god loved you it will soften your stance it will make you think again it will make you decide that let it go so let's read this verse again and i want us to think about it as you read it for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life so if god hadn't given us his love what would have happened would have perished so the essence of love is that it stops people from perishing or dying somebody can't help himself god's love comes to save you from perishing because without god's love you will perish So God so loved the world that he gave his only. Another thing you realize is that God didn't spare. It was the only son, but he loved so much that he was prepared to give his only. Not that he had extra, he gave his only begotten son. That anyone, whosoever. So God's love is again a universal thing. It does not differentiate. So your love will not differentiate and it doesn't matter once somebody needs it 
you are going to be there to give it. There are too many people with what I call selective love. They look at your face and decide that because you are nice, because you are educated, because you come from my tribe, because you belong to my party. But when God comes, he doesn't know NDC, he doesn't know NPP. So you are in your office and somebody comes and the person doesn't belong to your party. The person doesn't belong to your church. And sometimes you find out that people are very selective. But when it comes to God, he loves unconditionally and his love doesn't differentiate. You and I can be beneficiaries of his love because he didn't differentiate. You are old. You used to be a drug addict. You used to be a thief. You came from a poor background. But God's love doesn't differentiate. I mean, one of the things that excites me is to come before a God and know that irrespective and no matter who I am, this God loves me. And it doesn't matter whether my parents were okay or not okay. This God loves me. It doesn't matter whether I went to school and passed my exams or not. This God loves me. It doesn't matter whether I was born in prison or I'm the child of drug addicts. This God, he loves me. He loves me. It doesn't matter what people say about me. This God says, whosoever. So you may be at the lowest point of your life. You may be going through the most difficult. You may be the vilest offender. Everybody has rejected you, but this God is picking you up. You see, sometimes we read this verse and we just take it for granted. And we think that oh, it's just a verse to quote. But sit down, reflect over it. It will begin to change a lot of things you do and how you do it. You are hurt. You are bitter. You are poor. You are broke. You've been betrayed. You are disappointed. But you reflect on how God loved you. And you decide that this is the way to love. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Turn your Bible to 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. Why do we love God? Why can somebody say, I love God? We love him because he first loved us. So why do you love God? Because you first felt and understood his love. And you know that when you didn't deserve it, he loved you. So we love him in response to understanding his love for us. Can you understand that? So when somebody doesn't understand the enormity of God's love for us, your love is going to be small. Your love for God is proportional to your understanding of how God loves us. So if you think that, oh, as for me, I just come to church. You see, you don't realize the whole essence of salvation and the unconditional love undifferentiated love to everyone you think that oh I'm, as for me i'm just a church member no but when you begin to understand the love and how it was given to you when you didn't deserve it and how he sacrificed his only begotten son so that all who perish will no longer perish but have a life that comes from god that life will supplant every other life you were born with. Maybe you were born in poverty. You were born in curses. But the life of God begins to take you out and override and overshadow the negative life around you so that you can live. When you reflect on it, you will realize that, ah, this God, your love is too much. That is why usually people who have been through very painful, bad experiences, maybe somebody who was in the occultic, or somebody who was a fetish priest, or somebody who was in hospital and about to die, or had been diagnosed of a terminal disease, when that person receives the love of God and rises up, the attitude and the love of that person seems to be more intense than somebody who maybe was just picked on the streets. Because that person will say, I have felt the love of God. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? And so you find out that people who usually like an apostle Paul who comes from a background like that is full of passion and zeal and is in a hurry to serve God. Because 
we love him because he first loved us why do you love god why are you in church we love him because he first loved us so let's look at a few things that god's love does romans chapter 8 verse 31 and 32 what shall we say then to these things if god be for us who can be against us verse 32 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things i want you to read verse 32 again and as i'm sharing with you today i'm also teaching you how to meditate it means to think to ponder you are not just supposed to read the bible you are supposed to meditate upon it to think deeply upon it so let's all read verse 32 together he that spared not his own son what did god do to his own son he didn't spare him think about it what does it mean can you imagine god looking at his son and saying, i won't spare you what, what does that mean to you it means i won't let you go even though you are my son you will have to pay a price i won't spare you so god says he did not spare his own son but what did he do he delivered him up for us all then what does he say how shall he not with him also freely give us all things so look at it when god had to make a decision concerning his son his only begotten son his ultimate because when you have a son and you have things your son is going to rule one day over the things so you value your son above the things isn't it but god didn't give us things he gave us his son can you understand that and the bible is showing you that if god did not spare his son how much more shall he not with him freely give us things so which one is more important things or the son you see which one is going to be easier for you to believe in the things or the son no if god gave you his son and then he tells you he can give you things which one will be easier for you to believe in let me give you another example if i bought you a house and i tell you that i'm willing to give you furniture for the house which one will be easier for you to believe the house or the furniture if i give you a car and i tell you that i can also buy you petrol which one is more difficult for me the car but so if i've given you the car is it going to be easy for you to believe that i can buy you petrol you see this is where the point starts from because many of you even though you come to church you haven't really believed that god gave you his son the foundation of your belief and your faith is that if god gave you his son and you truly believe it then it should be easier for you to believe him for rent it should be easier for you to believe him for school fees but the reason why people struggle to believe god for anything is that they haven't even received the son well so the bible says he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all can't you believe that he can freely give you all other things so when you find somebody who believes in jesus christ and believes that god gave him to us and that is your faith it is very easy for you to go to god and ask him for things because he's giving you something bigger than the things so do you really believe that he gave you his son with your mouth it's very easy but you must now sit down and meditate and let that awareness come into you because based on that your love for him will grow god you gave me your son wow you actually didn't hold back your only begotten son you spared him not even when i was a sinner how much more that i am born again won't you give me what i need when i didn't deserve it when i was a sinner you gave me a much bigger gift than anything i could ever imagine now that i'm born again now that i'm your child why would you punish me by not giving me food by not giving me clothes that is why the bible says that don't think about what you wear and all those things it's nothing even the beds of the air so there are many people who come to church you've never really meditated on the fact that for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son how much more he says 
if he that spared not his own son, he didn't spare him. He didn't say, that's the only one, so let me spare him. But he gave him to us. How much more? How much more? Every time you are coming before God, remember that he gave you his son. Every time you think there's anything too difficult, that God will, will not give you anything, remember that he didn't spare his son, but he gave him. How much more will he not with him freely? Look at how he says, how much more will he not with him what? Freely. So when God is giving, how does he give? Freely. You know, sometimes we think that, oh, we must pray and pray and pray in a certain way and ask God and quote Bible verses. See, God wants to give up. Why? Because love is a giver. Did you hear that? Love is prepared to give and to give sacrificially and to give freely. Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So, what did God give to you? His son. So, what do you have? You have God's son. What do you have? You have God's son. He gave it to you. So, one of the things you must walk around boldly declaring, I have the son of God. I have him. God gave me his son. He didn't keep him. He gave it to me. I have him. And then he says, how much more shall he also not with him? So God gives with his son, so the people who are able to receive the son, something comes along with it, with him. So the Bible is saying that all things are with the son. And when I give you the son, I have also freely with him. I'm now not going to make up my mind that after I give you the son, I will give you other things. With him, it is a package. Giving you all things. Many years ago, one of the interesting stories I read was a man who wanted to travel and he didn't have enough money. And he was going to sit in a ship across the oceans and travel abroad. And so he saved a lot of money and eventually bought a ticket for the ship ride. And so when he was going, he said, Charlie, the way I've hustled, as for me, I don't have money. So I'm going to buy a box of cabin biscuits and if you know cabin biscuits when you are going to school and you know you don't have a lot of provisions you buy cabin biscuits the hard one and then so he bought a back a, a, a box of cabin biscuits and then he took it on the ship with him and when he entered the ship he entered into his room or his cabin and he stayed in his cabin and says as for me i don't have money and so every day he will apportion maybe two or three pieces of biscuits and eat it and drink water every day then he'll be looking at people passing by and going to the restaurant and the discos and everything and jamming and you say these people they have money so after a long while the captain said ah there is a passenger on the ship we have never seen around this was about two or three days to the end of the trip so he sent somebody to go and ask the person says is there anything wrong is there something you don't like about the ship that is why you never come out that is why you never mix with the people. That is why you don't come and enjoy our bar and our restaurants and our discos and everything. And the man looked at the captain and says, you don't know where I've come from. You don't know. The way I struggled to buy my tickets to be able to travel. When I was coming, I didn't have anything. And so I just bought a box of carbon biscuits. And that's all that I've been living on for all these months we've been on the ship. And the captain looked at him and says, ah, 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 ah. When you bought the ticket, all the things included on the ship was in the price of the ticket. And you could have had the benefit of eating in the restaurant morning, afternoon, evening. You could have ordered free food into your room. You could have come and swam in the swimming pool and do everything. But you didn't come because you didn't know. Many of us, we are like this man who has boarded the ship waiting to go to heaven and we don't understand that God has freely with him given us all things and we act as we have received Jesus we are in the boat but we can't go to the restaurant we are in the ship but we can't even walk outside we are just in our room eating cabin biscuits waiting till the day we die and we go to heaven that is not Christianity. 
how much more shall he not with him also freely giving us all things there is healing there is deliverance there is salvation if God in your sins gave his son how much more will he not with him freely not with extra cost freely and so you find people who are they are coming for a prayer meeting to come and talk to God. It's as if hmm, you see, it's like you, it's your right. There are things that are called kingdom rights, but many of us don't seem to have an idea, and we think that oh, God is some wicked God, and you must pray ah, before you drop some little milk in your tea. God is not like that. How much more shall He not with Him freely, freely give us what? all freely give us what so what are the all things you are looking for you see you are still working you are still broke you are still angry you are still going through life you don't understand that god's love freely with his son gives us all things you see your father may not have it but this god will with his son freely give you all things the hospital may not have but God with his son freely gives you all things. All. So it is up to you now to start believing it. Because God has given you by his love. But you can decide that I'll stay in my room and eat my cabin biscuits. And behave like, as for me, where I come from. And, and there are some of you here. You see, your mentality, that's why you must be emancipated. Because your mindset is, Pastor, Ole Ninja. You see, that mindset is what is worrying you. Because you can't seem to believe God. You received Jesus Christ, but you can't receive forgiveness. You did a lot of bad things. But you can't believe that with Him, He freely forgives, He freely heals, He freely provides. So, you are still in church. Are you born again? Yes. But, hmm, pastor, three years ago, what I did, you can't forgive. And because you can't even forgive yourself, you are going to find it difficult to improve your relationship with other people. Because you think that when somebody does something, imagine me for, even if you forgive him, Christ, and he hold me. He that spared not his own son. He that spared not his own son. He that spared not his own son. But delivered him up. For us all. How shall he not? Think about it. How shall he not? So you see the greatest gift. Is that God gave us his son. That is love. He didn't hold back. So unless you can have a foundation of believing in God's love. That this God didn't hold back. He didn't spare. He didn't stop. Why? Because of you. In Choco, you know, sometimes some of us think we are not worthy. So if somebody comes and says, I want to give you something big, hey, hey, hey you have me afraid. Because you think that the person is lying. Or you, you think that, no, 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 no. The person is not serious. So many of you, you come to church, but you still can't believe that God gave you his son. Because nobody has given you an expensive gift before. Nobody has given you a car before. Nobody has given you a shed before. Nobody has given you even 20 cities before. So when you think of God's love, it's like your whole mind is 20 cities. But God is bigger. What has God given you? Not just a mouth thing, oh, his son. You see, I want you to sit down and reflect and say, hey, this God, your love is too much. It's too much. You see, if God can give you his son and not withhold him, can he not, will he not be willing to open your womb? Will he not be willing to give you a job? Will he not be willing to give you food? Will he not be willing to give you a house? Will he not be willing to give you clothes? So the major hindrance to your faith and to your work with God is that you are struggling to believe that he gave you his son mentally or in a way you have accepted that okay for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son you have heard it but you haven't believed that it is you 
that he gave it for. So you've gone into your cabin with your cabin biscuits and you are chewing the cabin biscuits and water and other people are eating. But as for you, you are there waiting to go to heaven and you sing songs like, we shall laugh when we get to heaven. We shall dance when we go to heaven. But heaven has come on earth. Read the verse again. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So, the first thing you've got to understand is that God gave his son. Do you believe that? Say it with me. I have a son. Say, God gave me his son. God gave me his only begotten son. You see, one of your faith confessions must be to say this and say it and say it and believe 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 it. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And with the heart, you believe it. God gave me his only begotten son. He delivered him up for me. I believe it. I believe it. God didn't spare. 